Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Today we take a look at something that I purchased from the Gibson Demo Shop. And we talked about this in the last guitar hunting episode when we featured them. This is the High Performance Les Paul. Now when the High Performance series first came out, I'll be honest, I didn't really care about it, especially these particular ones. But it's kind of funny, here we are about three years after the introduction of this particular model. And Gibson has changed hands and company as well as just modified what their lineup looks like. Today, everything is vintage inspired. Now there is a modern lineup, but looking back on these things, you know, I kind of have a, a curiosity about these. So today we are going to check out this thing right here. That's right, I finally got my hands on one of these cases. I've been wanting to check one of these things out. I think, what, for two, two, three years, I did a rock or not. So I basically thought these would be similar to the old chainsaw style case. That is nice. So they have those really big aluminum style cases that are ridiculously heavy. This is not heavy at all. But so far, I'm impressed with this. The only thing that would have made this better is if they would have somehow found a way to do like TSA latches on it. I love those things. It looks like one, two, three, four, five latches on them. It's got like the regular leather style handle. But let's go ahead and open up this high performance guitar. She's pretty in pink. From the larger nut width to the style of nut that they use to the neck profile, just to everything. I'm really excited to check this guitar out today. So this is a high performance 2018 in the pink fade finish. They offer five different finishes. You can see them here on the screen. But the pink one, you know, it was one of those things where it's like, it's so strange, you have to like it. And you're also gonna notice, hey, yep, I finally got one of those guitars that doesn't have pickup rings, no pick guard. They do it from the back somehow, we'll have to check that out. But since this was from the mod shop, it does have a little bit of modifications. And what they've done is they've given it the rose gold treatment. Remember the rose gold SGs? This one has the mix matched gold and chrome hardware that actually looks pretty good on this one. So first impressions straight out of the box. I don't hate the fade finish as much as I thought I would. It actually looks pretty okay in person. I mean, you get the dark kind of reddish hue up here and then it fades out into you know, almost nothing. Whoa. Okay, so there's like underneath this finish itself, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. It actually has like a metallic pink undercoat. How did they do that? You only see that in like certain lighting where that comes to life. That's interesting. Oh man, I didn't even think about having the belly cut. This feels rather chunky, but right up here, it's got that slightly accessed heel carve, not exactly the same. I feel like they could have rounded this off a little bit more to make it even more comfortable, but it's kind of similar to what they have on the Les Paul Modern yet today. But yeah, this guitar, it feels chunkier for some reason. But I think that comes down to our wider neck profile. So far, I don't hate the neck profile. It's definitely very wide though. That'd be good for somebody that has larger hands. But if you have small hands, you might not like that. It's definitely going to take some getting used to on this one. But as far as the weight goes, it's not too bad. But all right, in a world filled with brand new guitars that are very vintage inspired, let's go ahead and throw this super modern Les Paul on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs. Because yes, this is one of those ones that has the crazy dip switches that gives you so many different tonal opportunities. Inside the High Performance 2, let's make sense out of these pickups. I didn't know what I was really getting into, but it's actually a pretty simple system. So it's just your regular pickups in here. They're humbuckers, but they don't have rings. So instead of the legs normally facing outwards for the rings to go into, they face inward. Because now we're utilizing two screws that go directly through the body. Say so they're pretty heavy duty, you can see them right here, they're black in color. But what happens is they come through to the back to secure to the inside of the bracket right there. And now instead of two adjustment springs connected to the screws, they actually just have the springs like within the cavity, kind of like what they do with P90 pickups. But instead of like two right here, they actually have them three. So it's fairly easy to set up, especially because they actually route little bits of wood out. That way they stay in place as you're trying to install it. And that's a pretty decent sized route too, so they stick in there nice and firm. But our neck pickup cavity has a P8 written in it, and our bridge is HCPS18. 
What you're gonna notice, this bridge pickup cavity route is really shallow. Like normally we see through to the mahogany body, which you can see right here for the screws through the body. But the rest of it is still within the maple top here. But as far as the pickups, we're rocking the Gibson Rhythm Pro and the Lead Pro Plus in the bridge. And as far as pickup readings, I'm getting 8.44k ohms in the bridge, neck position 7.61, in the middle 4. Now as far as the electronics go, you can tap and split and do a whole bunch of other stuff, but we'll talk about that on the back. But speaking of the knobs, take a look at them. I always thought these would be very similar to what they used on the Goddess series, but honestly they're not. They're like giant top hats. They don't have quite as curved of an edge. It's mainly just like a regular knurled knob, but they have these just to, you know, make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. You know, more so like a regular Les Paul style knob. So if you like the regular Telecaster style, knobs these are very similar they've got good grip on them since these are all push pull pots that's definitely a good thing i would say as far as our toggle switch goes it's the regular one but you do have a slightly fancy tip here it's also knurled just like the knobs but we'll move along to the top here it's so strange seeing a les paul without plastics on it i really wish i could show what this finish looks like in person because i always thought this was just all there was to it i didn't know there was that metallic undercoat like at certain angles, it just kind of shines lightly underneath it. I'm still not going to say I love the fade finish, but at least it's got a cool thing going on there. As far as the bridge and tailpiece goes, remember, this one's been modified by Gibson. Stock configuration ones do not have gold pieces right here with the mix match of chrome and gold. That's just something fancy they decided to do on here. But this is a lightweight aluminum tailpiece. As is the bridge, like these things weigh almost nothing and it's made by Advanced Plating Incorporated. But you'll notice that Gibson went as far as even doing it for the adjustable pole pieces within the pickup. You got the gold screws matching with the chrome covers with a gold output jack plate here. But as far as body construction, it's two-piece flame maple with a regular mahogany back that's multi-pieced and it has ultra-modern weight relief. So that's the one that has the V shape and then all the other different chamberings. But then we move on to the neck. This is a mahogany neck with an asymmetrical neck profile. This one has a rosewood fretboard, but you can also find rich light ones if you get the high performance two. Just as a quick rundown, the high performance one shipped with robot tuners, but the two switched over to the rich light fretboard, locking Grover tuners, and they also gave it a special bridge. But remember, all these demo models typically are a factory second or something that was returned or rejected. I think the reason why this one was rejected is right here. There's like a, a little knot or a hole in the wood on the fretboard. And at the original price of $3,699 for these things, yeah, I could see why somebody wouldn't want that. To put that into perspective, today's Les Paul Modern only cost $2,799. So when Gibson came back over and changed stuff, they really slashed those prices down. But the other thing you're going to notice about this is, hey, look, no fret nibs on the high performance series. They deem those not very high performance. And I can understand. Sometimes they will catch the strings, depending on if there's a little gap or not. If you've never played a late 90s, early 2000s model, you don't know the suffering is real. <laughs> Most guitars with the fret nibs, you don't have any issues. But as soon as you get one that has the issue, you'll understand it. If nothing else, it does give you a little bit more room to play with on the fretboard. And you'll notice, hey, our inlays are actually true mother of pearl on a regular les paul standard they're acrylic just since the beginning of time that's just how they spec them out so having the les paul custom-esque attribute of mother of pearl makes them fancy and that's something else they also brought on to the les paul modern which you can check out this review if you want to check out a regular one but this is from the era when the high performance had a really wide nut width this particular one measures 1.73 inches, about 2.12. Yeah, that's way wider up there. First fret neck depth, 0.85. And then by the 12th, it stays very slim, 0.88. And you gotta remember, this is the asymmetrical neck profile. So it's got a little bit more on the base side, less on the treble. And it also has a compound radius. Now they don't tell me what compound radius, but usually in Gibson terms, it means anywhere between 12 up here, and then it flattens out to like 16 or so. So not just your regular 12 inch radius on this guy. And that's the titanium nut. Now despite being a wider nut width, there's actually two metal channels on the other sides of the nut. So it's not actually going to be different string spacing. It just looks like you have more room on the edge of the fretboard. So if you always find yourself falling off the fretboard, maybe try one of these things out. Very similar to like a classical guitar's neck, but it's 
ridiculously thin and flat feeling, you know, radius wise and back of the neck wise. But now moving on to the headstock, once again you can see the modification of the added gold nuts. They look kind of nice. And it's just a Gibson Mother of Pearl logo with the regular Les Paul model silkscreen. And what feels like an aluminum HP truss rod cover, standing for high performance. Moving on to the back, here's where things get interesting. So it's kind of similar to a dark back gold top. It's a little bit of a reddish hue, but most times in person it just turns and appears black. But I think black cherry would be a good way to describe this. So here's how you adjust the height of the pickup. It's just like a regular pickup height adjustment screw right here. It's just on the back of the guitar. Installing the pickups back in, it wasn't too difficult. You just have to stand the guitar up like this, hold it there with your hand, and then use your other hand to tighten the screws down to put it back in. But as far as just adjusting the height of the pickups, yeah, it's pretty much regular. And that's your sacrifice for not having pickup rings on the front. But here's where things get really interesting. So this is back when Gibson was doing all the PCB stuff. So four push-pull pots on this PCB system, even the three-way toggle switches on a quick connect. But what makes this one different from the ones that they started using all the way back in 2014 is this is the most advanced one yet because of these little controversial things right here. This is called the dip switch system. So right now they're all down, so not activated. But you've got five different things that you can modify what this whole system is doing. And thankfully they give you this nice little chart on the outside. Now if you were to happen to take this sticker off because you don't like the look of it, they also give you one on the inside. Number one is for the neck pickup. You're going between tap or split. A lot of people use these terms interchangeably. They are different. Tap just means you take some of the coils out, whereas split means you take half the coil out. So that'll give you a slightly different sound on one. So that's for the neck pickup. The second is for the bridge. Now the neck volume is control number three, and it looks like it says it's a high pass filter. Out or in circuit. Then number four is the same for that. Then I have no idea what transient suppression even means, so... <laughs> I looked it up and found a nice article on Gibson's website. Apparently it just has to do something with like pick noise, just non-musical spikes they call them within your recording. Apparently that's supposed to round them off just to make the recording sound a little bit better, but produces no tonal change. I'll just have to leave this off. We'll just kind of run through it together and you know, see how it goes. But you can just move them up and down like that. Now the biggest critique to that is everybody's saying, okay, yeah, in the middle of my gig, if I want to switch from tap to split, you really expect me to take my screwdriver out mid-gig and swap it? Yeah, the, I mean, they, they could have put it on the top or maybe even go as far as putting it on the side, but let's face it, you're probably going to figure out what you like out of the circuit, whether you're a tapping or a splitting guy, and you're just going to set it and forget it. But it'll be fun to check out today anyways. But you've got your regular output jack on the side. You've got the large style strap buttons in your regular locations. Notice they also went as far as giving the golden screws. And then as I was talking about earlier, you get a little bit of a comfort carve back here and a, a pseudo access heel carve. I honestly feel the same way about this as I do the real Les Paul Moderns that they're making today. It's not as good as a Les Paul access, but it's okay. It's comfortable, but there's a whole lot more that they could have done to make it even better. I think another reason why this one made it to the demo shop is there is a, a pretty visible seam line on the it's back. not like the guitar is cracking apart or anything. But if you catch it in the light just right, you can see quite a visible seam line. But moving on from our mahogany body, we've got a mahogany neck here. Here's what that looks like at 1st fret and 12th fret. You can see it gets really wide towards the 12th. And it just favors the bass side a little bit and cuts away a little bit of the treble side. Since this was a Series 1 high performance model, this initially would have had the robot tuners on it, but Gibson has upgraded it to the locking Grovers. So all these little dings in the finish, that was caused by the robot tuners being on here. So it's been upgraded to high performance 2 specs. But it was stamped mod on this one because it was part of the Gibson demo shop, and it is a 2018 model. All put back together, this thing's going to weigh about 8 pounds, 9.4 ounces. So let's go ahead and plug it in and hear how these tones sound. I'm going to do my best to demonstrate all the tones that this thing is capable of. We'll start with our bridge pickup. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So far, just the pickups themselves, I actually really like them. Really like that middle position, super chimey. between split and tap. Personally for me, I prefer the down position. gives me a uh, twangy Telecaster vibes a little bit. Now we'll try the same thing with the neck pickup. Once again, I think I prefer that down position, which I believe is tap. It just sounds a little bit more full. If you're just looking for something a little bit different from the regular Les Paul tone. And of course you can also do that with the middle position. I'll just do that real quick. Now let's try these high pass filters in and out of circuit. Starting with our bridge position. I can't say I hear a huge difference between those filters. However, this one gives you that honky tonk out of phase in the middle position only. So here's your regular middle. So overall, I think I would just leave everything in the down position. I don't get much use out of the filters, but maybe somebody more advanced in playing guitar and, you know, really tweaking and dialing in their tone would get more use out of it. But let's go ahead and switch over to some distorted tones now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, strangely enough, I think I prefer the up position on distorted tones. So I guess you'd have to have a set dirty guitar and a set clean guitar unless you want to keep reaching back here to switch your stuff up. Let's try that neck pickup out. Yep, that just sealed the deal for me as to liking the up position on the distorted channel. And listen to that clarity on this one versus the other one. See how you lose some of the notes to the muddiness there? You don't get that in the up position. All right, now that we've got a better understanding of this model, what are my final thoughts? First off, let's talk the neck profile. Yes, it is wide feeling, but you get used to it really quickly. I think this guitar is a little bit more comfortable to sit down with. And if you're one of those guys that likes to wrap your thumb around the edge, you're probably not gonna like these because to do that, you really have to widen your hand out. But if you play the more classical way with your thumb on the back, I think you might actually enjoy these style necks even more. So that's strictly just a preference thing. As far as not having pickup rings and stuff, Honestly, I didn't miss them. I didn't notice anything different while I was playing, but not having them there visually makes this guitar look much longer in comparison, like more width to it. And I measured it. It's the exact same, you know, nine inches here, 13 inches there. You can compare it to a regular Les Paul and yes, it does all match up, but switching back to a regular Les Paul neck, it's like, whoa, this thing feels so tiny now. It's kind of like when I have a Buckethead Les Paul and I switch back to one of these, except for, I think I personally still prefer the more traditional neck profile because it feels more natural and faster to me personally, because I like to wrap my thumb a bit. As far as the tones, I was quite happy with the tones out of this thing. Even just not even doing fancy electronics, just straight up the pickups, I thought they sounded pretty good, clean and distorted. Now, unfortunately, I have a, a mix between tap and split as to what I prefer with clean and distorted. But ultimately, I, I think the dip switch, there's a reason why they stopped doing this. And it's not just because somebody else took over the company. It's kind of just a gimmick in my opinion. I like being able to switch between tap and split though. So if they could find a way to incorporate that in the other models in a slightly more useful way, like maybe a uh, three tiered pot, I'm not sure if that exists. If it doesn't exist, maybe somebody can invent it. So there's actually like three steps. So the down step, the middle step, and then it would come up just a little bit more for like a third step. I think that'd be more useful than a dip switch because those things are so hard to move. They're tiny, even if you have the back plate off. So if you've always wanted to buy one of these high performance circuits just to try for yourself, I wouldn't worry too much about it unless you're using this instrument for recording purposes. In that case, yeah, then it makes sense to flip your dip switches and whatnot and get whatever you really need. So as far as the guitar goes, once you sit down with it for a little bit, it's actually quite comfortable. Would I suggest picking one of these up? Depends on the price point. The original almost $4,000, probably not. Definitely go used custom shop at that point. But if you can find one of these around 2000 bucks, you like the wider neck profile, I think you will like these. They're kind of a, 
interesting blending of specs. We'll just leave it at that. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it either. But I know there's a lot of people that dig these fade finishes and it's one of the few Gibson models that you can still find these on outside of like the Epiphone Les Paul Moderns. So troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today to this high performance review. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.